My name's Craig Wright. Um, I've been involved with cryptography for most of my life, uh, way back from cypherpunk days, etc. Um, my background is security and forensics primarily, but also did law and a few other things. I've been involved with Bitcoin for quite a number of years now, um, mainly as a researcher. Um, I'm on and off sort of involved with Charles Sturt and other universities. I study, I, I research, I write papers occasionally and basically work on weird and wacky things. So did you buy any? Uh, I've bought and sold many Bitcoins, yes. Okay. What was the price when you came in? When I first came in, uh, there wasn't a price. All right, so say a little bit about Bitcoin in the future and what it, what it is. What is Bitcoin? What is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is basically the, the future of everything. I'm not talking money, I'm talking everything. It comes from the idea of merging a number of um, cryptographic protocols with a um, uh, 2005 published idea of a triple entry ledger. What that enables is a, a way and means of creating not only smart currency, but um, a means of tracking and registering anything that can exist. That's anything from IDs, reputation, people. It's everything from ownership of digital property rights, micropayments associated with those, charging, assurance contracts, anything you can think of, anything that we have now and more. It's a way of advertising, marketing. It's a way of cleaning up the planet. I mean, one I thought of the other day during uh, a different interview was in not too much more time, and people are already experimenting with this, we'll have RFID tags on everything. These will have a IPv6 address. We can integrate um, the use of the digital signature scheme in Bitcoin with um, cryptographically assigned addresses so that we have a um, a fairly anonymous version of an IP address that is routed through mobile routing anywhere. That can be associated with the CAN you buy, uh, you buy, allowing people to then track and market your activities if you so want. But also, apart from that, you have the entire what happens to that CAN. So you buy an aluminium CAN, you put it in a recycle bin, and you can have part of an M&M uh, contract that um, a part of that goes back to you. So because you've dropped your aluminium can in an aluminium can bucket, someone pays you for that can. A micropayment, yes, but it happens. If you decide to drop it down the harbour and it floats out to Sydney Harbour, then there can be a tracking thing put on by the council who then knows who's littered. Your can has ended up floating in the harbour, so therefore we can name and shame you as the biggest litterer. Bitcoin enables that in the future. There's a lot of work to be done on the protocols. There's a lot of work to be done with everything else around it. Uh, distributed autonomous corporations, DACs, um, and the whole AI components that need to be built. But this is where we'll be in 20, maybe 30 years. And Bitcoin is the foundation of that. It is the foundation of secure internet. We won't have SSL in the future. We will have IPv6 with uh, IPsec enabling end-to-end -end communications. And Bitcoin can actually be integrated into that now. Most people don't realize that, but it will enable just secure, firewalled, end-to-end -end mobile domains, enabling people to be part of a company domain anywhere in the world securely in a way that won't easily be hacked, will stop corporate fraud. If you're using the company computer, you could be only allowed to access through corporate uh, protocols, through proxies. If you're using your own, it could reroute you anywhere you want. And you can be charged, you can earn money, whatever else, instantaneously. That's Bitcoin. But the whole idea of an assurance fund or an assurance contract doesn't just need to be crowdfunding. I mean, there's a lot of argument about what if people pull out, but with Kickstarter, people can pull out beforehand as well, or not put their money in even if they're pledged things. The basic contract, as something like Lighthouse might say, may not have all the authentication methods in there. 
but it can. Just because no one's built it yet, no one has that wallet yet, doesn't mean it can't actually eventuate. And having smart contracts that enable people to buy these things will allow someone to um, set up either crowdfunded or projects for uh, public works or changes to the Bitcoin protocol itself over time. So we're looking at something where if you want to come in there and I need an upgrade to my road, we can get people in the street to vote whether they want to or not. So it means people can actually create autonomous corporations and vote in those. Yes. The whole idea of assurance contracts changes the way that government will actually be. Why do you need to have people have roads uh, owned by a government? Why can't people own the roads in their street? People can vote how much they want to spend to maintain them, charge people to go up or down them. If the street doesn't want a lot of people uh, going up them, they can charge a lot or a little. So that you can uh, basically make money that way. Other people can then decide to put in extra roads if there's more. Yeah. How would the charging actually work? It would be micropayments based on people who um, uh, own sections of property. So if, for instance, a, there are two competing roads, one, by ne uh, one next to another, then you would be facing market forces to which people actually use. If one gets congested, then people are going to use the more expensive one more often. Uh, if one's not congested, then you choose based on whether it's maintained as well. So what you're talking about, I think, sounds a little bit more like the decent centralisation. I'm not possibly. thinking... Well, why would you have centralisation? That's what I'm asking. I'm not sure how it the, would Anyone could set up their own system. You could have your own road and decide how you're going to run it. Corporations could pop up and compete. And not the corporations we have now, but corporations that are run by pits of software and people. I could program um, an artificial intelligence agent to act as my share broker and I can buy and sell and decide I want a, a mix of public utilities, mix of normal corporations, a mix of whatever else. I may want part hospital, part road, part lighthouse. I can charge people for the maintenance of uh, the curbs. So instead of paying rates in different areas, we decide how much we're going to maintain or not. I like the whole idea of de decentralized. It's like any, anything where you have a network effect. You end up with large um, networks competing with each other, but also many smaller networks. We, you end up with a long tail effect. So although you have big blocks of centralized networks, you also have many individual distributed networks. And that's one of the things that we've seen open up with Amazon and many other online players. The whole democratization of the internet means, although we do have the Lady Gagas or whatever else out there pumping out pop that grab a lot of audience. At the same time, we now have these individual indie bands who are making money selling five or six records and maybe getting a, a people to come to a pub or something like this. And then you've got everything in between. So the long tail effect is something that will really come about through, um, through Bitcoin. We're going to have large nodes. We're going to have super nodes developing the idea of uh, centralized banking infrastructures that protect you and, and have a centralized wallet that you can trust and have protection against fraud and, and insurance and all that sort of stuff. But at the same time, that doesn't mean you can't take your money out and leave it under the mattress yourself, so to speak, or protect it your own way, or create your own that competes. Well, sort of. I think they look at me as if I'm some strange alien with um, um, sort of acid for blood that's going to basically rip apart the spaceship and, and change everything. At the moment, the whole Bitcoin infrastructure is less than Commonwealth Bank pays in taxes, which means the whole global Bitcoin infrastructure is less than Bitcoin, um, as Bitcoin is less than Commonwealth Bank pays in taxes in Australia, which means People are focusing still on the way that we used to do it. And anything that is disruptive, anything that has changed, many people are scared of. 
But the thing is, you can't actually grow without changing. And we're in a world that is going to get faster, smarter, many things. And growth is change. We want to create a peer-to-peer -peer distributed banking model where Mt. Gox, for instance, well, you didn't really know what you had. We want something where each individual deposit is secured. And although it's a traditional centralized bank where it's protected at the same time, you know what your holdings are and they can't be touched without your interaction or someone else who's assigned by you. Now, that's a, a more difficult model. When you look at how banks are, what they do is they pool your money, they own it, and they, they use fractional reserve banking to spend whatever they want. And Mt. Gox really failed because it was a fractional reserve type system where no one knew what the hell they actually had. Where we're trying to move is a distributed banking infrastructure where anyone can actually set up their own apps, APIs, and even a sub-bank, so to speak. Something where we have competition, where people can directly know what their investments are, how they're performing. And we've, run a, uh, we've had to start recreating our own core banking software from scratch. Some of the problems are that traditional core banking software that's out there is not going to deliver what we need. We have actually um, been, we've, we worked with um, a number of banking products, uh, some of the, the um, two biggest core banking platforms and both failed. None of them could deliver anywhere near what we needed. So it's a big research and development effort at the moment. So are the banks involved in these discoveries and what are they saying? What's their response to that? All oh, the banks aren't involved at all. The banks are basically scared of all this. So they don't even know that their system, how outdated their system is, really? Like no. everything else. They're in a horse and cart and they don't realise that there's a jet being built. <laughs>